Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, I discovers my wife, Evelyn, is cheating on me with her uncle. Come, let's explore these real life stories. My wife and I had been married for several years before I caught her red-handed cheating on me. Evelyn and I were actually fellowship members, and she was gorgeous. Most times, I would go to church on Sunday just to see her. However, we were not close friends until I discovered my aunt had moved into her neighborhood, three houses down from my aunt's house, to be precise. At that time, we were just teenagers, and we weren't close friends, like I said earlier, because I wasn't exactly the kind of guy she would love to associate with. About four years later, my aunt died from cancer, and I stopped visiting the neighborhood, and everyone moved on with their lives. But I changed. Something happened to me that I can't share here, and it pushed me to take a different direction in life. I became more serious about my dreams, education, career, and spiritual life. Before this time, I was just a wild young man, doing things my peer group did, without thinking of the consequences for the future. Luckily, I went to college, graduated, and found a job. Then one day, I bumped into Evelyn on my way back from work. It was a pleasant surprise, and we exchanged contacts. A few days later, when we were free, we hung out to talk about what had happened in our lives in the past years, and, mainly, what had happened with me after our first meeting. We had other hangouts together, and slowly the love I had for her rekindled. When I felt the time was right, I asked her out, and she said yes. We dated for two years, and Evelyn and I never got intimate in the whole two years. I was a changed guy and didn't want her to think I was with her because of her body. Aside from that, my spirituality with God grew, and I didn't want to jeopardize that too. So, Evelyn and I promised to be celibate until marriage. Eventually, we got married and got intimate on the first night of our wedding. But somehow, I felt like Evelyn was not enjoying my husband's duties. No matter how much I did, she did not say a word to boost my ego or anything. She just stayed there like she was waiting for me to get over and done with, which continued for almost three years. We wanted to have kids early because I didn't want to have a 15-year-old son at 50. But no matter how much we tried, she couldn't conceive. Meanwhile, there was this uncle of Evelyn, whom she was so fond of, her mother's younger brother. I hadn't seen her around him several times as a teenager, so I believed he was her favorite uncle. This uncle of hers, Jesse, used to visit us a lot after we got married, and I didn't have an issue with that because both of our families were welcome to the house. They didn't need permission before coming because Evelyn was always at home. Evelyn's father was not in her life, and I had the first-hand experience of growing up without a father or an uncle I could look up to. So, I didn't want to ruin their moments. Most times, I would go shopping for Jesse to show him that I appreciated how he looked after my wife and raised her to be the God-fearing woman she was, or so I thought. Also, on some nights, Jesse was allowed to sleep over at our place if he stayed so late, and I never said no because I began to see him as my father. All along, I never noticed anything unusual between the two of them. I knew they were close, and almost every weekend, Evelyn would invite her Uncle Jesse to come over. The only thing I complained about was how she told him about everything that was happening in our lives. There was even a time when Evelyn and I had a terrible fight, and she called Jesse to come and pick her up, and she ended up spending the night there. After that incident was settled, we had no issue that would require her to leave the house anymore. Also, if I felt like Jesse was visiting too much and I'd barely had time to spend with Evelyn, I would suggest taking her somewhere, but she would end up inviting Jesse along, so I stopped doing that. Throughout these two years, nothing suspicious happened until one fateful Friday. That Friday, I was about to return from work when I found out that my 15-year-old car had broken down and I had to call my usual car company to take it and fix it. So, I took a taxi home. Our third anniversary was around the corner, and I had already made plans to take Evelyn on vacation. It was meant to be our first, but I decided I could get her flowers in advance. 
So, to do that, I asked the taxi driver to drop me at a flower shop a street away from where we lived, and I got the flowers and walked back home. As I climbed my front porch, I heard strange sounds coming from my living room, and I was shocked. At first, I believed Evelyn was watching movies, but it didn't sit well with me because it was unlike her, and the sounds I heard sounded more natural. Finally, when I could not control my thoughts anymore, I pushed the door with force, and when it opened, my eyes saw the unbelievable. I didn't even know when the flowers fell out of my hands. When they saw me, they jumped up immediately and scrambled for their clothes. I screamed so loud, and tears dropped uncontrollably from my eyes. That was the worst kind of heartbreak and betrayal I had ever gotten. I would never believe that Jesse and Evelyn could be a thing, and at that point, their closeness began to make sense to me. I understood why he was always around her at my house and why she couldn't go a single day without calling him. It wasn't because he was like a father figure to her, but because they were cheating on me. Evelyn began to cry and started to beg me, but I was so disgusted and I didn't even want to look her in the eye. Evelyn eventually left with her uncle and they were so embarrassed by how the neighbors gathered to look at them. After she left, she tried to call me multiple times, but I blocked her and she didn't return to the house because of the embarrassment. Later, I discovered that she had been having an affair with Jesse since she was young, even while we promised to save ourselves for each other. Also, the whole time Jesse visited my home like it was his, they were cheating on me, and I even bought him gifts to appreciate him, and I treated him with so much love. Around the same time, I resigned from my job. I contacted a lawyer who helped process the divorce papers. In the end, we divorced and went our separate ways. The wound I got from that heartbreak has not healed since then. Today would have been our fourth anniversary, and I think it's better to share this here to lessen the burden I've carried for so long. I hate her so much for doing this to me. It would have been way better if she didn't come into my life to hurt me like this, and I hope she gets her karma. As for her family, I don't know what happened when her family found out, and I don't care, but I hope everyone sees her as a monster. If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.